So in this video we're going to find the line of intersection of two planes, an equation for it. There's more than one way to do this, so I'm going to do it um, using cross products. It's not the only way to do it. I think from a conceptual point of view it's the way that I prefer to do it. But here's the basic idea. If two planes intersect, then they're going to intersect in a line. And if we want to find a vector equation for that line, so if we think about establishing a coordinate system in three-dimensional space. From our previous conversations, really what we need would be two things. We would need a vector from the origin to any place on the line. We need a vector from the origin to any place on the line. So if this is a vector u that gets us onto the line, then the vector equation for our line is going to equal u, the vector that gets us to the line. And then what we need is a vector that's parallel to the line, and we're going to go plus k times, where k is just some scalar, k times a vector parallel to the line. And the concept here is really simple. If you have plane 1, and this is the vector n1, the normal vector to plane 1, we know that the normal vector hits plane 1 at a 90 degree angle. But if the line of intersection is in plane 1, which it will be, then the normal vector to plane 1 is also perpendicular to the line of intersection. And plane 2, we know, has a normal vector n sub 2 that's perpendicular to everything in plane 2. But the line of intersection is also in plane 2. So the, so the, normal, vect, uh, the normal vector to plane 2 is also perpendicular to the line of intersection. And the idea is because the normal vectors n sub 1 and n sub 2 are both perpendicular to the line, then, then that means that if we take the cross product of n sub 1 and n sub 2, and we know that the cross product of non-parallel vectors generates a vector that's perpendicular to each of the two vectors. So if we take the cross product n sub 1 with n sub 2, then we get a vector that's parallel to the line. So to get the equation of the line, we just do any vector onto the line plus a scalar times the cross product of the two normal vectors or any scalar multiple of the two vectors. So if we take the cross product and it has a common factor, we can factor that common factor out and kind of throw it away and use the resulting vector. So the concept is find a vector that gets you onto the line of intersection and then take the cross product of the normal vectors to generate a vector that's parallel to the line of intersection and then you'll have a vector equation for that line which you can then, if you need to, extract the parametric equations for the line. So here it says find the equation of the line of intersection for these two planes. So if these two planes intersect, then we should be able to find a single point of intersection. And probably the simplest way to find a point of intersection, and the reason why we want to find a point of intersection of the two planes, just a single point, is the moment I have a point, say I know that uh, the two planes intersect at x sub 1, y sub 1, z sub 1, now I have a vector. Once I find a single point of intersection, I have a vector that gets me from the origin to the plane. I have that vector u. So step one is find a point of intersection. If there's a point of intersection of two planes, you're guaranteed there's a line of intersection. And the simplest way to find a single point of intersection is going to be to take one of the three uh, one of the three of x, y, and z and set it equal to zero. So in this case, I'm going to choose to set z equal to zero. So I'm going to say, hey, let z be zero. And then if you let z be zero, figure out what x and y must be given that z is equal to zero. So if I let z equal to zero, I'm going to wind up with the equation x minus 2y plus 1 equals 0. That, that will be all that's left if z is equal to 0. And then I could subtract 1 from both sides, which would give me x minus 2y equals negative 1. And if we plug z equal to 0 in here, we're going to get the equation 2x plus 3y minus 5 equals 0. And then I could add 5 to both sides, giving me 2x plus 3y equals 5. And the idea is what we want to do is determine if z is 0, 
what must x and y be for the intersection at the point of intersection and now this just gives us a system of two equations and two unknowns so we can solve it by substitution we can solve it by elimination if we know about matrices we could use uh, an augmented matrix so any technique that you know for solving a system will work here so one technique would be to multiply all of equation one by negative two which would give me negative two times x plus negative two times negative two is going to be plus four y equals negative two times negative one is positive two and then using elimination I could add this equation the second one to the result of that first manipulation so I get 2x plus negative 2x is 0, 3y plus 4y is 7y equals 5 plus 2 is 7. Divide both sides by 1, we get y must equal 1 if z is equal to 0. And then substitute back into one of the original equations. Substitute y equal to 1 in, so we get x minus 2 times y is 1 at the point of intersection equals negative 1 so we get x minus 2 equals negative 1 add 2 to both sides x must be 1 so a point of intersection is the point x is 1 y is 1 z is 0 so the equation of intersect the, the equation of the line of intersection is going to be give me a vector that gets me from the origin onto the line but that's just going to be the vector generated by this point so the line is going to equal, here's a vector that gets me from the origin onto the line because this is a point of intersection of the two planes. It must be a point on the line of intersection. And then I'm gonna go plus k times some any vector, any vector that's parallel to the line of intersection. So to get a vector parallel to the line of intersection, like we mentioned here, we're just gonna take the cross product of the two normal vectors which generates a perpendicular vector that's parallel to that line of intersection. So if this is plane one up here, then one normal vector is going to be uh, just extracted from the coefficients of the x, y, z terms. So we'll get one, negative two, one is a normal vector to plane one, and n sub two, a normal vector to plane number two, if this is plane two, is gonna be extracted from its coefficient, so two, 3 and negative 2. So we just need to take the cross product of these two vectors to get a vector perpendicular to each of them. So taking their cross product we get i, j, k and we're going to cross it with 1, negative 2, 1, 1, negative 2, 1 and then 2, 3, negative 2, 2, 3, negative 2. So the cross products are going to be i times and we cross row one column one and we get this minor matrix right here so negative two times negative two is four minus one times three is three and then it goes plus minus plus so it's minus j times cross row one column two we get the matrix one two one negative two so we go one times negative two is negative two minus one times two is two and then it's plus k times we cross row one column three it leaves us with this little minor uh, in here and we calculate its determinant one times three is three minus negative two times two is negative four and in component form this gives us the vector four minus three is one minus negative four is positive four and three minus negative four is seven so this vector one four seven is a vector that is parallel to the line of intersection. So I feed it in here, one, four, seven. So I have a vector that gets me to the line and then times any scalar multiple of a vector that's parallel to that line of intersection. So this is a vector equation for the line of intersection of these two planes. And then if I needed the parametric equations of intersection, I would just pull those directly from the vector equation. So I would get the x, uh, x is, the x coordinates of intersection will be one plus k times one is k. The y coordinates of intersection will be given by one plus k times four is four k. And then the z components will be zero, so I don't need to write it, zero plus k times seven is just seven k. So there's your parametric equations of intersection.
Ooh, that's a horrible K. Let's try him again. Four times K. There, much better. 